Take two breaths. So dramatic. <laughs> Did you know that the oceans produce 50% of the world's oxygen? And without healthy oceans, we wouldn't have been able to take that second breath. Plankton blooms and other marine plants living in the ocean use the natural process of photosynthesis to produce the oxygen. And coral reefs are essentially the backbones to the oceans. Housing over 25% of all marine animals, coral reefs are hugely important ecosystems. And 3.5 billion people, 3.5 billion people worldwide depend on the oceans as their primary food source. And this brings me to my story. When I was six, I was snorkeling on a beautiful coral reef called Kaikili in West Maui, Hawaii. <laughs> it amazed me to see the beautiful colors of that underwater world. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. It left a really lasting impact. It was out of my world. But one year later, I returned to the exact spot, and I could not believe my eyes. Those colors that I had remembered so dearly were greatly overtaken by algae, this brown stuff you see up here. I asked my parents what was happening, but they didn't know, although they had also clearly noticed the difference. I was only seven, but I knew that I needed answers. I learned that the fish had gotten smaller, there was less biodiversity, and coral reefs were dying at an alarming rate all over the world due to climate change, ocean acidification, and pollution. Corals are alive. They're made up of tiny animals called polyps. And those polyps build hard structures that we know of as coral reefs. But those structures are extremely sensitive, those polyps are extremely sensitive to environmental change locally and globally. And on Kaikili Reef, polyps were dying from the unnatural overgrowth of algae. I realized that I was swimming through a battleground. I was on the front line of climate change, and these coral polyps were fighting for their lives. I thought to myself, why was the algae taking over? What could I do to educate people and raise awareness? And how could I make a difference in ocean preservation? Sadness over the devasta devastation and questions about what was happening began to fill me. With my questions at hand, I started looking for answers. I wrote to many experts, asking them what was happening. In my quest for answers, I had found a passion. My passion became something that I loved, and it gave me a sense of purpose to try to make a difference. As I kept returning to Kaikili Reef year after year, I knew that something was wrong. I needed to take a stand. I needed to make a difference. But what could a kid do, a seven-year-old kid do, about global climate change and its devastation? Plenty. For one thing, I could focus on local water pollution issues by educating anyone I could reach. And it turns out that the local pollution issues were the leading cause of devastation on Kaikili. I met people who had the same passions. We all wanted to know what was happening. I met people who had been swimming, fishing, and diving in these waters for years. From their stories, I learned what was happening. I learned that nutrients were being put in the water. And I thought that was great. I mean, nutrients are thought of as being something good, right? I mean, I was seven. I thought, like, the fish were omega-3s. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but I found out later that those nutrients were actually not good. The, the nutrients were polluting the water and harming the coral. The only thing that they were feeding was the algae, the same algae that was overtaking the reef. The nutrients were coming from local sewage treatment plants located right up the coast. Ironically, those plants were put in place to avoid sewage water from getting into the oceans. But through the process of treating the water and injecting it deep into the ground, they were allowing nutrient-rich water to seep into the reef. Over time, I learned of many contributing factors, such as watershed issues from development, water runoff, agriculture, and overfishing. And they were all leading to the imbalance of the reef. 
That imbalance was causing the algae to overgrow, killing the coral. Once learning about these issues, I decided that I would educate people to make a difference and raise awareness. That was definitely a goal that I knew I could accomplish. So I was set, or I thought. I had a passion, a goal, and an idea, but what I needed was a passionate question to pursue. Passionate questions drive discovery. If Newton hadn't asked why that apple fell out of the tree, would we have discovered gravity? In order to change our world, one must ask passionate questions. But what are passionate questions? They're questions that prompt research, that encourage work, that connect to you and your interests. They're questions that you want to answer, puzzles that you must solve. A passionate question should challenge you and what is assumed to be true. You have to venture out of the box, out of the known, and into what is possible. A passionate question should be the bridge to the undiscovered, where you will find your answer. But how do we embark on the pursuit of a passionate question, and what happens on the journey to answer? In my case, it was hard for people to take a little kid seriously. I mean, I was seven, like this big. <laughs> I approached many experts, asking them for help. And sometimes they ignored me, but there were some that embraced me like my mentors at the State of Hawaii, Division of Aquatic Resources, who ever so patiently guided me through my journeys. Mentors are extremely important in the pursuit of a passionate question. They have guided me through my adventures. They have helped me persevere and accomplish my goals. One of my mentors is even in the audience today. Hi, Margo. And in the times when I was most successful, it required my perseverance. It's not enough just to ask passionate questions, but you have to stick to them as well. When I was seven and my amazement for the reef was shattered, I asked my passionate questions. Why was the algae taking over? What could I do to raise awareness about what was happening? And how could I make a difference in ocean preservation? Once defining these questions, I started on my journey to answer. Asking the right questions can lead to new thinking. When I was trying to answer my question about how to educate, I realized that very few people had the opportunity to dive on coral reefs. I thought to myself, Dylan, how could people care about coral reefs if they can't even see them? That's how I came up with my idea of the virtual reef. I decided that if I couldn't bring everyone in the water or every classroom to a coral reef, I'd bring the reefs to them. With the virtual reef, I created a system to take overlapping pictures underwater. Then I pitched a corporation to allow me access to a supercomputer that would stitch those pictures together, creating a 3D underwater panoramic view of a real coral reef. And they went for it. It boosted my confidence to know that others wanted to help. With the virtual reef, I can bring anyone closer to experiencing the beauties of the underwater world. And because of this, many people started relating to what I was doing. Teachers got their classrooms involved. Kids from 48 countries wanted to dive in my virtual reef. And I realized that while I was taking pictures, while I was taking pictures to show reefs to people, I was also creating a documentation project. And now ReefQuest's virtual reef has turned into one of the world's largest documentation projects of coral reefs. <laughs> and then I discovered that the virtual reef was much more than just pictures. It was a platform to collect scientific data through citizen science. Citizen science is a way of allowing anyone to become scientific discoverers. And I learned that through the process of answering your passionate questions, you will inevitably forge new discoveries. I created a new way of online education and research. And this whole real life journey all sprouted from pursuing those passionate questions. 
ReefQuest, an organization fostering marine environmental stewardship through citizen science, was born from those essential questions. And so much more can still come through my pursuit of those passionate questions. I see something new and beautiful every time I dive on Kaikili Reef, and I hope that I can keep the wonders that exist below the ocean surface alive and thriving for a long, long time. So I challenge you. I challenge you to question something and embark on the pursuit of a passionate question. Embark on the journey to answers, on the journey to discovery, and change our world. Change our world one vision, one passion, and one question at a time. Thank you. Thank you.